Right, good morning. No, no, wrong, wrong, wrong already. I've started off totally wrong. It isn't good morning at all, is it? I'm so used to doing these shows in the mornings. It is afternoon, early evening, and I know for all of you in in uh, the British Isles, it is late. It's ten o'clock at night, right? So good, good, good morning to all of you Australians who are watching it tomorrow. <laughs> Good afternoon <laughs> to all of you who are on my time schedule and good evening to all of you who are not. Anyway, so there you go. Hello, everybody. And this is, yes, cracking up. And as you can see, we have our two wonderful Ks, K, K, K and K. We've got KW. Put your hand up, KW. And hello, hello. Eight and HK, because all I can, oh no, chaotic. Why don't we just call you chaotic? <laughs> it's a fantastic play on words. And um, these two ladies, uh, if you've not watched this show before, these two ladies are probably two of my oldest and most trusted and actually most valued friends. So we thought we'd get together because we do get together from time to time. And in fact, um, I think it's uh, I can uh, say that the two K's uh, spent the weekend together last weekend. They didn't yes. invite me. They left me out. They didn't yeah. even they didn't even FaceTime me when they were together. Ooh. And they went out and about and they had fun. And I know they had good food because chaotic was um, a cooking, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I know that they had good food and they didn't, and I'll say it again, didn't and they didn't even invite me. Anyway, uh, so before we begin, I do want to mention that I do have Gregel, as always, standing to my right side. And um, Chris is in the background. Do you want to say hi, Chris? Hello, everyone. Hi, KK and Rosemary. Hi, Chris. Okay. okay. Well, why... <laughs> You might ask, why are we calling it cracking up? Well, we've got K, and then we've got R-A, me, and then we've got K. And in England, we have a saying, if we are cracking up about something, it means that we're having a good, good laugh about something, or we're having a, you know, just a really good uh, sort of, I don't know what, fun time together. So we are cracking up. Uh, and we're going to be cracking up for at least the next hour, maybe a little bit longer. So um, just just to uh, mention that this week, I do believe it might have been yesterday or sometime this month anyway, it was International yeah. Women's Day. And um, I think that International Women's Day is supposed to encourage us all to celebrate our not only our own selves, but you know, to think about all the strong women that we've had in our lives or in history who who have inspired us and who have, you know, sort of really uh, be, been somehow instrumental in our lives, even if they lived 200 years ago. And um, so I thought, first of all, I'm going to introduce you guys individually and you can say hi and then we'll start with that. So uh so on my i don't know if this works which is my left and which is my right you see that's my right so on my right i have k my friend k uh who is a nurse or was a nurse for a long time and um i met k uh in was it before you went to hong kong k no did oh you, yes, did, yes, it was. It was just prior, just prior. Yeah, to going. you came for a consultation, right? Yes. Before, yes. just prior to you going to Hong Kong with your yes. family, with your then husband and your family, and so, so Kate, you came to me for a consultation. Can you remember why you came? Was it just that you wanted to make sure that you were doing the right thing, or what was it? Well, there was a lot of things going on in my life at the time plus this big move so i did what i had a lot of questions right you know right is like is this the right thing etc right. it's a big thing yeah 
So that's how I met you. We talked a little bit about Hong Kong. And I think even at that first consultation, you said to me something like, well, if you ever want to come and visit or something like that. And I'm saying, oh, of course, yes. And neither of us really took it too seriously, I think. Um, and um, so that's how we that's how we met. Uh, I did eventually get go to Hong Kong, but that's a whole other story. And we maybe touch on that a little bit. And um, And then on my left uh we've got uh my friend Kay who when I met you Kay you were a farmer's wife with I two was. little girls and since that time you've now got three little girls who aren't so little anymore right <laughs> and um I think you came for a consultation with me I did yes and then didn't didn't I take you to a friend of mine who was a healer who didn't we you did Took you there, and my and life changed. And you became a student. Yes, the most difficult student. Of yes, <laughs> I. It was all intentional. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, and so uh, anyway, so this is how the three of us met, and then through lots of different uh, scenarios and experiences, we sort of got to know each other really well. Um, and um, eventually I introduced the two of you. Uh, I can't remember how, because for a long time, you didn't know about each other, right? So you were both my friends individually. Probably just heard about each other. Yeah. But didn't know. And then yeah. we yeah. met, the... The... Yeah. sorry, then we met through Go another, ahead person didn't we i don't know we had, i was gonna ask we had, you we had another connection <laughs> of a friend at oh, my school. Well, yeah well the friend the friend the friend was actually my ex-husband's niece and she was <laughs> the one who told me about you oh okay and so that was why i came for a, a consultation so how did, how did you two meet well Through i you through you, through you, but then I found out that I was at school with this girl for the past however many years, and I mm. then went to give healing to this a connection in the family to this girl, didn't I? Anyway, mm. yeah, a tenuous connections wait going years back, strange. Okay, I still don't get how the two of you met, but anyway, maybe when, you can think when about I, it. Back to when I came back to the UK was when we met. Oh, okay. All right. Right. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect yeah. sense. Okay. So anyway, yeah. so so <clears throat> over the years, I think it's fair to say, how many years do you think? I met you in eighty two. And I met you in eighty eight. So at least well, over forty years then. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Have we known each other? Have we known each other for nearly fifty years? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Thirty something. Thirty something. Thirty-four. Something. I don't know. Anyway. Maths was never my. No, it's not my. Well, obviously, it's not my great thing either. We can. We can. Well, it's do. actually. It's actually forty years this June, July for me. Oh, is it really? For 82. See, doesn't it really? Yeah, that's right. You're right. So doesn't it really go really, really fast? Anyway, yes, it does. Yeah. so we've known each other for anywhere between 35 and 40 years altogether. Uh, mm. we've, you've known me. I've known the two of you. So we go back a long way. And over those uh, sort of all of those years, nearly 40 years, um, We've had lots and lots and lots of different experiences together. Now, Kay, on my left Kay, uh, was a student for a long time and you did then become a fully-fledged healer with my organisation, our organisation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, you've got so many stories about different patients that we've dealt with and a lot mm -hmm. of patients that you've had on your own that, you know that yes. you, you sort yeah. of doesn't. Um, do you remember Mark? Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember? I, yes, Mark? I do very well. Yes. 
And, um, you know, we had this mother who came to the healing centre one day. I don't know if you remember this, um, Kay, but we had this mother come to the healing centre. Her son, Mark, had been involved in a severe accident and had a really awful injury. They talk, They said he would never walk again or talk again or do any of the normal things. And he was completely paralysed. And they suggested to his parents that the or those people who know all of these things they suggested that um they should put him in a home where he would be cared for and uh, i've lost k i don't know if, if have we lost k chris which k uh she's just in a low um internet the bar oh, is a little bit low okay yeah it's but anyway that's okay don't you don't need to do anything so um and um, she asked if we'd come as healers to visit him. And we went a lot, remember? You came with me yeah. quite a, a lot of those times. Yeah. And this kid who couldn't uh, walk, couldn't talk, um, couldn't communicate in any way uh, was, and when we, we first met him, the one thing I knew about him was that he had an amazing sense of humor because it showed in his eyes. And... <laughs> um, eventually he was our patient for a long long time for many many years and eventually he did uh learn to talk and uh communicate and uh we used to have a lot of fun do you remember yes he, he, he used to go swimming a lot and then he used to walk in the water right so uh not so, and um also the most i don't know if you remember this Kay, but um when he had his accident uh, they, of course, that he they checked him out, and the reason that they said he would never be able to walk again was because he was missing um, so much of his spine in the middle uh -huh. that had been it, it was dam not just damaged, but it was missing. So therefore, you know, he, he would never be able to walk again. And then after quite a few years, we went for several years to give him healing, and then one day they checked him out again, and miraculously. Um, mm. uh, he wasn't missing a sp anything on his <laughs> spine. His spine had seemed to have come back together again. So, yeah. uh, as you said, yeah, he was exactly. able to walk in the pool, and they were yeah. teaching him to walk with uh, with sticks and crutches and so on. So, you know, mm. uh, the moral there is never give up, right? Never ever give up, and we never give up no. on our patients. Um, and no. um, I was thinking, uh, if we're going back to now the other K, I was thinking, uh, do you remember our lovely patient Bob in Hong yeah. Kong? Okay, yes. Bob, Bob yes. and Linda. And uh, yeah. Bob had a, a severe uh, a brain tumour. Had, he'd had cancer. He had a tumour on his back, which then went into his brain. And we would go over there <laughs> and party a lot with him and his wife, do you <laughs> <Yes>. remember? <laughs> we'd go and, you know, sometimes we'd have dinner or sometimes we'd go out to eat uh, when he was able when he was able to, you know, so it, it was he was doing okay at first, but you know, they knew that um, you know, it was his cancer was getting steadily worse. But we had so much fun, right? Remember that? We had so much yeah. fun with him. And, uh, you know, he he just loved us going, didn't he? Just loved us being there and just uh, going. Mm. You think that when people, you know, you think that, you know, we're healers and you think that we go into really dire situations, which, of course, we do. Mm. Because usually our patients are the, the people who um, everybody else has given up hope. They've, you know... They've uh, they've been yeah. told the worst news ever, and yeah, that's, that's when people come to us when there's no more hope. Often mm -hmm. people come and they find a healer, um, and uh, we've had so, we've experienced so many miracles and so many amazing situations. And I don't know. I'm sort of putting you both on the spot a little bit, and I know. I mean, chaotic. I know that you're not a student, but we were in Hong Kong a lot, and you had a lot to do with uh, a lot of our patients um right you, you you saw that you came with me a lot we went to the clinic do you remember where that clinic that we expected yeah. a few people to turn up and 
we were in, inundated. It was on the radio. Yeah. We thought, oh, only a few people turn up here. We couldn't believe the amount of people there were. Can you remember that? I can. Yeah. So I'm going to sort of throw it out there to you. You can have time to think about it. But I'm just going to throw it to you. Does one situation or one person that, you know, you've give, given healing to, okay, in your case, you've come with me to give healing to, is, is there anything that sort of sticks in your mind? Is there any one particular moment that sticks in your mind more than any other? Who are you asking that of? Either of you. Why don't, why don't we try to go with you first? I went to see a lady in a local town who had cancer. She was a young lady. She was mid-30s, early 40s. Whole family devastated, obviously. She had a young family and older children as well and a, and a very lovely and attentive husband and a mum, mother-in-law, uh, and mother-in-law and mother who were usually there when I went to the house. Um, I went for several months and always on the same night or two nights sometimes. And um, during, during one of the healing sessions uh, and prior to the healing, healing that I gave her, the husband became very agitated and pulled me to one side and said, I'm very worried about her. She's seeing things and she's worrying about this hole in the wall and she needs to get all the furniture out of the way because she wants to get it she doesn't want to be blocked by the furniture because she can see this passageway she's got to go through in front of her on the bed now i knew at that time that she was close to passing and she loved her healing she was fantastic she threw herself into it she soaked it up like a sponge and the family were in there with me, helping. And she would tell us how many people she saw, the archway she was going to, this passageway it, it, she could see. On the wall opposite the bed. Up, on the wall opposite the bed. And she made yeah. her husband clear all the furniture out of the way. <laughs> and that was fantastic for the family because they, you know, we talked about it and what, um, and what she was she, seeing. Didn't she, I do remember this, didn't she see her father came? Yes, standing, she saw her father. Standing just yeah. by the tunnel waiting yes. for her. Yes, yeah. yes. And this yeah. happened over a period of weeks, became stronger and stronger. And uh, it was tremendous. It was tremendous yeah. for her and the family. And, and it, it helped it, them a lot. It was such a comfort to her family too, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah. And it was great learning for me because it well, was... just just imagine how privileged we've been to just be a part of all of that, right? Absolutely, yes. Um okay. and I think we were to the K. Can you think of a, an incident or a situation? Oh the th I suppose the thing that I think about most is that when you think of healing, you think it's always somebody getting better but it's also giving comfort to people to accept that they're not as well and their families. Yeah. And it's that support. I think healing is a, is a word you think they're always going to get better, but sometimes you just need to be at peace with what is gonna happen. And I think that giving mm -hmm. of that peace is such a big thing to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is going to get well. Did you find that, you know, when you came with me and we went to see different patients, did you find that, uh, because you're a nurse, so you're in the business of curing people, uh, you know, give them an injection and thing, what have you. It's a, it's a sort of a little bit of a different perspective. When you came with me and you saw how that worked and you saw that we weren't necessarily going to say to somebody, you're going to get better, because when we give healing, we give healing to the soul, not to the physical self, but we give healing to the soul. And, and very often the soul heals and then physical healing can take place very often. But when you were with me and you saw, I was, I was thinking about Bob and um, I think you were with me. I don't know if you remember this, Kay. We were 
um, uh, somebody loaned us a clinic or said you can use my, there was a doctor or a dentist or somebody said you can use my, my uh, clinic so many, you know, this time. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was a young woman who had been told that she got uh, two spirits fighting for domination in her head and she was going crazy and her husband had brought, brought her to me and she'd been told all this crazy stuff and um, I think I think when you are watching somebody give healing as you've, as you've just said when you watch somebody give healing it's not, you know, I'm going to lay my hands on you and then you're going to get up and walk, is it? Did you, did you no. find that comforting or how, what did you think of that? Well, I, the thing is, I think that even in nursing, I think in some ways we've become a little bit dependent on machines and looking at things. And I think the biggest thing is the touch anyway. And I think that just reinforced that for me, that you touch yeah. people right. in lots of ways and physically touching. And touching with words is a, is a big mm -hmm. thing yeah hmm. well you, of course you when you were nursing when you were learning you came from the old school i don't know if it's still the same but you came from the old school where weren't you told don't you can't get involved or you know don't get emotionally involved and so on hmm. whereas um reaching out and holding someone's hand was often frowned upon wasn't it you know because I think the nurses and the doctors, the te your teacher, teachers of nurses were afraid that you get too emotional about it and then you couldn't do your job. But what you're oh, saying they, is... I we weren't actually... They didn't actually... They did talk about the spiritual side of things. Um, so it wasn't that you shouldn't get involved. I think, really, they didn't say that. But I think it probably wasn't always valued as much as it should have been. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. Me. But you, but you, yeah. yeah. But you, you are a touchy feely person, anyway, aren't you? So, you know. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. it's because it doesn't come easily to everybody, does it? To to do that, it's not an easy thing to be able to reach oh. out and hold somebody or touch somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on from there, Chris, do we have? Do we have? Do we have anyone? It, in the chat room or are we just having a good time all by ourselves here <laughs> we have friends from as far away as italy to Ooh. hawaii for the people oh, who good. have decided that they will let us know where they're from oh that's good. nice good yeah yeah if you're Is listening it? and you're in the and you're in the chat room just do let us know which country you're uh you're um checking in from because we really love to know we have people from India, from Singapore, from, I don't know, from uh, Australia, from all over the place. So let us know where you're from because we like that. Mm. So do we have and any then, questions or any comments? Not so yet. Far? I think people are listening. But um, your friend Gary, our friend Gary, oh. is saying hello. And he especially loves Kay's laugh. So make sure you keep doing more of that for Gary. <laughs> Both Kay's. <laughs> <laughs> all right Your so now no <laughs> so let's uh let's just um because this is a curiosity to me and we we sort of um i think it's fair to say in different ways the three of us are very strong women and that's my that's my siri <laughs> saying I cannot, I cannot answer that well i don't need you thank you so, <laughs> don't um, need you <laughs> We'll endorse anyway. them. <laughs> so I think it's I think it's fair to say that you know each of us in our different ways, very different ways, mm. that you know we're very that we're very strong women. We've sort of I think I think all three of us have been through divorces and we've been through relationship issues and so on and so forth. And I think you know we've all of us had for different reasons and in different ways. Uh, sort of childhood issues family issues what have you so you know i think that helps to make us strong but it is women's week and um i do encourage any any of you out there i'll include you gary if you'd like because i don't think it's fair just to talk about women i think we should you know it should be 
not just Women's Week. I don't know if they have Man's International Day. I don't think they probably do. But anyway, if you think they do, correct me by all means. But I think that um, women are seen as the weaker sex. We've always been known as the weaker sex. And so men have grown up thinking that they uh, need to protect us and, and, uh, and nurture us and care for us. And a lot of men, especially those men who perhaps marry strong women, um, feel um, sort of uh, maybe a, a little, um, they find it difficult. I think a lot of men find women strong. They, they have grown up believing that, that um, women are the weaker sex. I personally don't think women are the weaker sex. What do you girls think? Do you think we are the weak sex? Ridiculous. No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I, I, I would challenge any man to, uh, to have a baby and then come back and tell me, <laughs> you know, no. are we the weaker sex? I think that's one of, the, no. one of the things women do and we need our strength. I think obviously physically men are... Uh, stronger, but I think emotionally, mentally, and in every other way, I think women tend to be the stronger sex. Yes, so, I who do. is there anyone in your life? Who, which of the women, or even if it's just one woman, who inspires you, or sort of you know, to feel proud to be a woman? I mean, I, um, you know, I think about my daughter and. Um, you know, she's overcome a lot of issues. A fantastic mother. She's, um, you know, she she just she just really is a great mother, and I ad I really admire admire her for that. Kay, I know, Kay, Hong Kong Kay, I know that uh, you, uh, you know, you admire your daughter. She's been through some very tough times, right? And um, and I know that she's inspired you, and you've been. Blessed to see what you've been doing. I'm not going to say anything about it. You can if you like to, and we don't care if you blubber and cry, and it's fine. <laughs> but if you'd rather ignore it and move on to something else, that's also fine. Um, but <laughs> um, but um, can you think of any women who inspire you, or you know, any one particular woman? It might be someone in your family. It might be someone who you worked with or, you know, just, or it could be someone in history. Well, I think, I think like the suffragettes, I think they, they had to be admired. Right. And obviously Florence Nightingale, but I think women are quite strong anyway. I've, and my mother right. was came through a lot of adversity to, you know, overcame a lot. So, well, she, and, and not, she a lot of that you don't know much later on. You know, you don't, you don't always know your parents' story until no. much later, and mm. so it's only then that you appreciate what right. what they have gone. Mm. Yes, yeah. Well, I mean, I yeah. know that your father was ill for a long time, and your mother really had to be head of the household, didn't she? Really? Yes. I mean, uh, there were seven children. And he was ill from before I was born, really. And I was only 15 when he died. So she had she had a lot, lot to deal with. A lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to have the best background from her own family for that support. That So she did it by herself, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that must... That, did it inspire you? Did it? Were you inspired by her? Yes, I think I think I I understood her better because we had we had a difficult relationship at times. But I think it's only because I le learned about her later that mm. I understood her, and therefore I appreciated her yeah. a lot mm. more. Right. Yeah.
Right, and you could understand why she was the way she was. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. It made sense. It made sense. And the things that you 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 took perhaps in an, in not always the most positive way, you could see that actually it was a positive thing from her side. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, having seven kids and a husband who's sick the majority of the time, I mean, she must have been mm. a very, very strong woman, very strong, to have to deal with all of that, to have to cope with all of that. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, so yeah. that, that, that has to be, in hindsight, because that's how we often look at our parents, don't we? In hindsight. Uh, mm. That's in hindsight. Yeah. And she must have been an amazing inspiration to you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, mm. K. To the K. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> I've, I've got oh. one on my right side, one on my left side. I've got two angels on my shoulders. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Um, yeah, interesting um, Interesting to think about it, as kay has been talking, because having seen you at the weekend, and we were talking about it, weren't we? And I've been thinking of that since and thinking of my mother and my grandmother and my great grandmother had a very strong maternal family. The women in my family were tremendously strong. And looking back um, over this over the years, uh, all of them and, and knowing what they did through the war, my great grandmother in Grimsby, which was bombed, nearly bombed out. Um, and lots of things and trials and tribulations that they all lived through. And then looking at what how my mother carried that through, and we also had quite a difficult um, relationship at times. Um, I understand her better now look, when I have to, when I'm with my three girls and I'm I'm what 60 mid 60s and I'm looking and thinking, yeah, I've changed in 30 years. I, and my thinking's different. Um, I think I'm probably a bit more mellow, but I'm appreciating what all the, the, the foundations that they laid down 100 years ago and 50 years ago and 40 years ago and how I've learned from it. But also I was thinking about um, International Women's Day and the, one of the young women, very young women, I absolutely think is amazing. And I, I'm going to look at this because I can't remember how to pronounce it. Malala Yousaf Yousaf oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the Pakistani Malala. girl that was shot by the Taliban for daring to go to, for daring to write a diary. Um and 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 tremendous. I get quite uh, we take it a lot for granted, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah. We do. yeah. And yeah. especially do, everything that's going on now. Yeah. You think you think, you know, these things are still happening, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. It never stops, yeah. does it? No. Well, it will I, be, um, yes. I, on, um, on Thursday, uh, people were, uh, uh, on, on our Thursday show, people were asking about Russia and the Ukraine and so on and so forth. Yeah. And yesterday we sent out our, uh, or this morning, I think, we sent out our newsletter. And um, I wrote uh, a little bit about, you know, sort of, wars and trials and tribulations and so on and so forth and and on thursday we had a woman who was saying how terrible the world was today and how awful it was and so on and you can go down that road and look at how awful yeah. and how terrible yeah. and how horrible it is um but in my own life there's so much joy to be found and so much happiness to yeah. be found and so much to laugh about i know i think that I think as a human race, we are, most of you and I, I'd like to hear what you girls think. As a human race, I think we're so spoiled. I mean, a yeah. hundred years ago, uh, yeah. you know, um, people had much worse lives than we do. There were, you know, there was the plague of London. There was, you know, that people used to go around painting crosses on the door, red crosses or red marks on the doors to tell people don't go in there because, mm. you know, they're all infected. Yeah. Mean, we, they had no sound dying and, and no. they died much, much earlier than we do today. Uh, and I think here we are, we're in this day of 
luxury. Yeah. In the days I mean, you hear, hear of... If a uh, cell phone work. Go ahead, Kate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Sorry. No, I was just thinking about, about women years ago who had lots of children, but the amount of children who died before yeah. never grew. You know, we the med yeah. medical yeah. care. Yeah. Um, such a lot. Yeah. I know. I mean, if I look at what happened to me, um, if I'd have lived even 100 years ago, I'd, I'd be dead. The technology yeah. that we had, the yeah. expertise in medical care that we had. If you just look at COVID, let me tell you, if that had have happened a hundred years ago, we'd all be dead. You know, we'd have had mass destruction. And people mm. get so involved in the negatives. And I think it's very hard for people because as a human race, this is my opinion. I want to hear yours. As a human race, I think we're so spoiled. Everybody has a cell phone. Yeah. Even kids of eight yeah. and ten years old now have cell phones. And um, yeah. everybody has a cell phone and everybody has a microwave and, uh, you know, there are very, very few compared. I know there's a, a massive homeless situation going on in different cities, but compared to the rest, of, uh, compared to the world and the world population, it is a small number. So most people, we're so pampered and we're so used to going to the doctor and they can fix something yeah. for us, or we're so yeah. used to, you know, something goes wrong with the television and somebody comes out and it fixes it's yes. fixed like that. And I think it's very hard for us, all of us, because we are so used to having this good life that yeah. people don't care. They just think it's normal now, but it isn't. It's a good life. And people are so used to when something happens, when something, you know, when something goes wrong, there's a tendency for us to, mm. to sort of think it's much worse than it is. <laughs> That's because, right. yeah. Yeah. Why aren't yeah. we fixing this? Because, you know, yeah. We can feel so pampered, I think, that it's hard for many people to then. I think if you've had a tough childhood, if you've had a tough life, it prepares you for anything else long. It prepares you to be strong. As we're talking about, it certainly prepares you to be strong. Mm -hmm. I feel so, so sad for those people who are born with a silver spoon in their mouth and people probably thinking, how would you be sad with a silver spoon in the mouth? If you're mm. born with a... It's gone off. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think it makes you more appreciative, certainly, yes. if you... Yeah, if you don't take things for adversity. granted. Yeah. That's right. That's don't think you take things for granted, do you? No. Is she there? Well, at least... <laughs> Not <laughs> yet. Silver spoon in your mouth. If you're born... He was coming and going. I think I was thinking about this. Um, there's a horrible phrase that's out now called the snowflake generation, isn't there? Oh no, wait. Yes. Here she is. I've never heard. I've never heard it. Oh right. That yes, yes. The least, the least bit of trauma, and you melt away. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's not just young people who are thinking that way. I mean, there are a lot of older people who are thinking that way too. Maybe, yeah, maybe. We do I have know. some comments in the chat room. Okay. All right. All right. That's so right. when you were asking Rosemary about men and how they felt about strong women, Andrew said, I found it inspirational. Good. <laughs> we love it. We love it, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, Gary says, I was raised by two women. I know what women are capable of. One of the strongest women I ever met was one of Rosemary's patients, Luella. Uh, oh gosh, yes, do right, and mm -hmm. that and Luella. Just thanks, Gary, for that because Luella. It's got a shadow on it. Got no, can't hear. Can't hear now. Oh, I mean, she had a. And she never complained. She never ever complained about her life. She was tough. She was scary tough. <laughs> um, 
and she thought that I was as tough at least, if not tougher than her, but she, no, she beat me, uh, hands down. She was fantastic, fantastic. Do we've gone again? Oh dear. Well, we have um, Gail in the chat room and she's saying, my hero is my great aunt May. She was a rural principal and school teacher in a one room building. Uh, how, that was Chris, a Chris, hold on a second. Can I just stop you for a sec? I don't know if it's me. It's you. Uh, that I'm cutting out, or, but I keep, you keep cutting out on me girls. So just keep going anyway. Can we, could you start that again, Chris? Yes, Gail is saying my hero is my great aunt May. She was a rural principal and school teacher in a one room building that was a church on Sunday and school during the week. <laughs> she drove a truck and picked up children, taught all the classes, including music and arts and crafts like paper mache. Oh. <laughs> she grew a large vegetable garden. She sewed my prom dress. And she wow. was an excellent cook. All of my life, I saw her do everything while she was on crutches due to rheumatoid arthritis in oh. her legs since she wow. was 20 years old. Wow. I never saw her as handicapped. Later in years, she lost her sight, and I watched her memorize folding her bills so she knew which was $1, $5, oh. or a 20 Whenever I even dare feel sorry for myself, I remember her and I quickly move forward. Marvelous. Amazing. Oh, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you so, so much for sharing that. There are so many, yeah. there are so many inspiring women in this world of ours. I know it's so easy to look at the negatives in life. Um, the, the good thing mm. about... Uh, the two Ks and myself is that no matter, I think I can honestly say this to both of you, no matter what awful stuff is going on around us and over the years there has been, between the three of us, there's been some awful stuff going on around us. We've <laughs> always been able to support each other and we've always been able to laugh. I don't know if that's a British thing. Uh, but we do laugh mm -hmm. even in the most mm -hmm. dire moments. Uh, and very often when, when I'm in a, an awful situation, I start laughing and I could cry because I'm laughing. <laughs> because why am I laughing? This is not funny, but I can't help it. It's sort of, I think it has to do with the British sense of humour. But I think it's fair to say that we all uh, really support each other, don't you think? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. yeah. I think yes. so. Yeah. So, Kay, I don't know if I would have cut you off or if you were cut off because I do want to hear your opinion. I I was interested in the that comment, the snowflake generation. <laughs> I don't quite know why you don't like that. But um, I think because I think it's very apt. I think it's a, you know, mm. I think because... Uh, but I don't think it just applies to young people. I think it applies to a lot of people and a lot of people who are used to sort of, you know, just um, you get help from the doctor or, you know, you, yeah. you know, there's there are cures for cancer now. And uh, as I say, if your TV goes wrong, you know, it's easy to fix it. Do you think that we are? Uh, uh, I, th I, th I think that a lot of people have ha have become used to expectations in life that they haven't worked towards or put towards and have no responsibility towards. And then if things don't work out, sometimes they're not prepared to deal with the consequences. And I think I do think there is, it, I think we are th this human race of ours right now. And certainly in the Western world, I think, there, there is, um, you know, this feeling of um, entitlement. Entitlement, so, that's what I was thinking of, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've lost you again, Rosemary. It's because I butted what in. What were you saying? Okay. Sorry? 
you started to say something before, didn't you, about somebody? Oh dear, poor thing. I don't know. Um, I was talking about um, I was talking about that young woman, wasn't I, who got shot? Yes, Malala. Malala. Yes, my daughter gave me a book about her. And um, she was sort of more in tune with it than I was. Are we? Are you back? She's back. Yes, I'm here. K, K, K H, K. We are going to have to get this down better. Yes. Uh, do you think that we are a world with a, you know, do you think that the world in general has an attitude of entitlement because we have it so on that. Mm. I think in some in some cases it is. I, you can't say that of everybody, but I no. think it's and I I think as well uh, we're not necessarily it's before there was an expectation get on with it and people yeah. had to and people have in fact, in some ways, um, people are not in, uh, encouraged to do that because it's like mm. saying to somebody who's depressed, oh, pull your socks up. You know what I mean? It, mm. So I, I don't know. It's, it's a difficult one. Uh, I think there's always going to be some who cope better than others or expect more than others. I think perhaps we've given too much to children. You th think of, I mean... Christmases, we had one main present and a few little <laughs> ones. But now they have lots of presents and that there's that expectation from... And I don't think we've helped that sometimes. No, I agree. Because you give people what you haven't had and it's mm. not all the best thing, I think. So, you know, we're, we're guilty to some extent. I also... Yeah. I also think... Um, uh, I have to be honest, it was only when I came to America, and I'm not saying that all of America is like this, so please, everybody out there listening, I'm not blaming America for this, but it's only when I came to America that uh, I heard, like, you know, serious talk about therapists, and everybody, everybody that I met seemed to have a therapist, and uh, you know, and some people have therapists for years. Now, I know that all over the world, people have therapists. I'm not just saying it's Americans. But when I was sort of growing up and, um, you know, when I was, uh, you know, a young woman and even when I was, when I sort of was very sick, um, nobody ever said you need to see a therapist or you need to go and talk to somebody to help you get over it. As you said, Kay, Put it was pull your socks up. You didn't know we didn't you didn't you either sank or swam. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Do, don't you think if that, that makes sense? Don't you think that um, people were expected to sort it out themselves? Yes. And dig in and dig in did. deep. And they did. They dug in but, deep and sorted it out. Yeah. I mean, you know, mm. going through a war, you think about all the bombings. In, uh, in England, not just in London, but, you know, in, in so many cities during during the Second World War were bombed. And um, people got on, you had, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't go to your therapist to say... There was no time to think this. about it, was there? No. You just got, you, you had to fight through it and get on with it. And I think oh. somehow, sort of since then, it's been so good for everybody that we have somehow forgotten mm. how to okay. cope or how to deal with mm. it's you know we're and and um you know the and i don't think um you know uh, doctors necessarily help i don't think that the governments necessarily help they give so much help to people who don't need it and i think mm. sometimes you know sort of some straight talking and some i think it's called tough love uh it mm. is needed but we don't seem to want to do it anymore. Everybody, everybody wants. To, everybody seems to want to pamper everybody. I know I'm going yeah. to get some really awful 
comments with that and i don't mean everyone and i need and i'm fully aware that there are people who need pampering and who need nurturing and who need help i'm not saying that but i think as a, a as a you know when you look at the world and you look at the people in the world i know there are people who still have to go down the mines i know that there are still people who have to go into the rice fields i know there are people who are don't have it good but i think generally speaking and especially in the western world we have it so good that we've forgotten how to cope when tragedy mm. does befall us. Mm. Mm. What do you think, uh, girl? I'm just think, sorry. Go on, Kay. No, I was I was just agreeing. I think I think is um, there will always be people who are copers that cope well. There will always be those certain people, but. I don't think we've necessarily helped by our attitude sometimes. And like you say, I don't think governments have helped necessarily. No. no. Because there's there's a bit of a almost a complaining in a way. I mean, over here, you've even got on the local buses a charter, what you expect from the bus company. <laughs> well, that just puts <laughs> expectations in everybody's heads. <laughs> is that true? Is that true? <laughs> it is true that in the local tram there's a there's a charter what you expect from the bus. Well, that's, that's, like that. that's fostering was, entitlement. Well that's that's right. I mean when I was nursing there was what they called the patient's charter. And when it came in, I remember arguing with somebody said saying it should have been a patient partnership. Because wow. you you have expectation it put all the expectation on the doctors and nurses without mm. the patients taking on responsibility for their own health and right. i think that's where we've gone a bit wrong yes we've yeah. not, we've i not i agree put yeah. some responsibility we've taken it's almost like we've we've wanting to spoon feed sometimes yeah yeah. Well, that's gone. That's gone all the way through to government, hasn't it? Yes, that's what I said. I don't think yeah. it's wrong. It's like in schools, the discipline has has oh. gone down from in schools because oh. you can't do this. You can't well, say there's this. There's no respect yeah. at all for anything. Uh, no, I think no. teachers now they so, don't have any authority. Whereas, you know, a few years ago. The teacher only had to look at you in a certain way and you yeah. you knew that if you did not pay attention there would be we've lost we've lost you consequences and i think mm -hmm. or they're not many i'm going to go to chris uh so chris comments and question because we're sort of coming close to Absolutely. We have Christina from Hawaii. Christina saying, I never had a strong woman to look up to. My mother was never there for me growing up. My grandmother, on the other hand, was always a kind, loving woman. I miss her so. I'd love to. We are, just so people know, we are three old ladies here. Um, yeah, not locked in the lavatory. Do you remember that? Yes, <laughs> it's a British thing. The old ladies not in the no, lavatory, no, no, no. they were there from Monday no, 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 to Saturday. No, 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 no. Nobody knew they were there. Nobody knew they were there. <laughs> oh, I, dear. I can remember, I can remember <laughs> we had Eartha Kitt come to England for the very first time, mm. and I love her. She's amazing, I loved her. amazing, amazing. And um, she sang this song, and um. Of course, I was, I don't know, I was maybe 10 or 12 or something at the time, we were watching it on TV, and she was on the London Palladium, and I didn't realize, uh, so I'm, she, she had this song that I would then go around the house singing, three old ladies with laughing eyes, do you, do you know that one? Yes. Uh, no, I sing. don't, sing me, sing me. I heard her sing. Three old ladies singing Creole ladies. So we are oh. three old ladies 
Uh, I'm older than both of you, but anyway, uh, so just, you know, just be aware, everybody. We want to hear your comments. Uh, All right, well. We are three old and we, you know. Go ahead, Chris. Annika says, hello, ladies. Regarding therapists, I have been advised to see a therapist after losing my darling. I look at my mother, my aunts, who are all widows, who continue life without ever seeing a therapist. Mm -hmm. Do well, they have good support networks, though, as well? You know, friends. Right. Friends can be like Have you been to see a therapist, or are you going to go the way of your mother and your your family? Annika uh, says she has no intention of seeing a therapist. Yeah. I, I love it. And you know, just because somebody says they're a therapist doesn't necessarily mean they're good at it. So we always have to be aware of that too. Uh, keep going, Chris. Who else have we got here? Anybody else wanting to comment? Uh, no, I think most of them have been listening. They're more enraptured with what you're saying than posing questions because this is a different type of show. Yeah, very, very different, in fact. Um, does anybody have a question for either of the two Ks or for me? We're going to put that out there. You've got all of five minutes to type in a question and we can answer it for you if possible. Uh, so uh, while we're waiting on anybody who has a question, if you've got a question for my two lovely friends here. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm going to now put both of you on the spot. Uh, you don't have to be nice. You don't have to be nice to each other, and you certainly don't you. have to be nice to me. <laughs> it's about rosary. Yeah. We've got them all stored up. But I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't about me, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, you, you know, so, so I've explained to everybody what I think about our friendship, the three of us. Briefly... <laughs> <laughs> go 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 for it briefly i presume she's saying what do we think yeah i just think it's nice that, <laughs> that even though you don't even though you're a long way away you still it's you still feel that that there's all you're always there for, for you it's the supportiveness that's there. You don't feel the distance, but you feel right. that support is still there. Yeah. And that friendship, the distance yeah. doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's nice, you feel. Absolutely. Distance and time and there's nothing to do with it. Um, we, we, we traverse these physical things, don't we, really? Um, all of us. Uh, very often I'll have been thinking about Kay and she's she's ringing me or FaceTime, same with you, Rosemary. And um, I think that's just great. And we're not islands, are we? We're all connected. That is the one good thing about technology. Yes, that you, good. yes. I, mean, I like to be pampered. It, but the good thing is you, you have still, you can have that face-to-face, -face, yes. yes. even with those miles. Yes. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Where have you gone, Rosemary? Are you there? She she has think... a very very low internet, but why don't, why don't I throw in a question if she doesn't pop on? Oh, Can you think it. of one of the funniest times that you've <laughs> ever spelt or I'm sorry, spent with Rosemary? Any little snort story or snippet you could share? <laughs> Anything. You first, uh, Jane. Well, I, I can think of a tram incident, but we <laughs> we we both tell slightly different stories. We have a different <laughs> view. For you it. tell your version. So Don't I'll worry. tell my, my version. Rosemary can tell her version later. The trams in Hong Kong are always packed, jam-packed. They're a very good system. They've come along quite quickly. But you go in the back of the tram and then you try and work your way through everybody to the front to get off. And the back to go in has like 
a turnstile, like a three leg turnstile. Metal, metal turnstile. Metal turnstile. And I remember being waiting for the tram and Rosemary was in front of me and she got on and I think she was probably talking to me at the same time as she got on and somehow these three legs she managed to get her front leg in front of the lower barrier and as she pushed forward and the top one moved forward which is what it happens the lower leg then went up between rosemary's legs and she was left hoisted on the top of this metal tripod. Yes. <laughs> and then we, she was like, oh, what on earth is happening with this metal bar between her legs, not able to move. And myself and some other Chinese person that was in front, we had to hoist her off, off to get into the, tr into the uh, tram. It was so funny. but. <laughs> Well, it was funny because my bum was sticking out and the doors kept opening. The clothes on my bum wouldn't close fully. They would open again. We were driving down the road like that while you guys tried to get me off of this thing. And we laughed and laughed and laughed. That was a, that was, yeah. it was such a funny, funny not really funny because it was me who was trapped, but still, it was funny. We laughed about that. Yeah. This is what I'm saying about this British sense of humor we have. So, to the K. Ah! Well, I don't think that I can think of anything funny that you did. But looking retrospectively, I think the funniest thing or the second funniest thing, because I'm not going to talk about the first funniest thing. The second funniest thing was in a small town called Newark, where you had we had a full a full theater, a full theater, about 500 people. This is in Newark. This is not the stage one. This is in Newark where you were in. You were in the back room getting changed and um, we were waiting for you to come onto the stage and you got your, everybody was there looking after you and helping out and we were all excited and the press were talking to you and you said, okay, just, just nip on, nip on the stage and tell them I won't be long. <laughs> so Kay being fully naive and eager and lovely, tripped onto the stage. You were so good. Oh, no. I was so stupid. And I stood there on this stage going, <laughs> so, right then, hello, hello, my name's Kay, blah, 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 blah. And um, I introduced you and waited and waited. Anyway, long and the short of it is I did a full class with them. Half an hour, full class, healing <laughs> energy, let's rub your hands, talk to each other, all that sort of thing. Um, and Are they all I mean, wondering who you were and what you were doing? Absolutely. In retrospect, it was funny. Um, but they were great, and they gave you a, a big, relieved applause. <laughs> and you and you get off the yeah, please get rid of that nutter. And they were very excited to see you, which is, I thought I did a good job there, you know, warm up act. Thank <laughs> you to all of those who came with us because yes, you really, all of you really did look after me so well, didn't oh. you? I mean, I don't you know, know you about fetched, that. You carried around, you, you made sure I had everything I needed so that I could do the job that I was meant to do. So yeah, you, yeah, you did a good job, didn't you? You did a lot of people, and the, one of the funny, one of the funniest ones was in Leeds, where we went through the barrier, and uh, we couldn't get in. The barrier wouldn't go up, and we were waiting to get in. There are lots of little places all over the country, small incidences that just lightened the atmosphere as we went in because 
I'm assuming you were nervous. You probably were, but I certainly was. Um, it was. They were good times. They were funny times. She's gone. Hello. Oh gosh, it's, it's a really bad connection. <laughs> yes. How about how about a piece of advice for women since it's International Women's Day week? Something that um, maybe somebody who doesn't have a community around them or a strong woman near them could uh, use some sort of tool that you might have experienced or something somebody told you. Ooh, that's fun. Mm. Um, keep a diary, keep your thoughts written down, underline positivities, keep a daily record of positive good things that have happened to you um, and things that you want to do and project your ideas forward. Always, I always think to maybe look forward towards the next thing not forgetting to to know what you're doing but to always have a plan is a very good idea i think one of the things that i heard is that how you speak and to yourself because we use phrases and you can say um i've not had such a good day today it's a negative phrase but the mm -hmm. fact that you said good day the good goes into your head as opposed to saying i've had a really bad day because then the oh. bad goes into your head. yeah yeah so you have to think yeah. about how you like you've if you're saying i feel awful today i feel don't feel yeah. well whereas yeah. if you say well you know it, yeah. it's it's the words that you use that yeah. actually filter in without you realizing it yes yeah. i remember when there was a film we went to see Rosemary when we were in Hong Kong. True story about a doctor. I know, I remember. And, yes, and the anaesthetist, well, the guy who he came to trust in the end, he'd taken, he used to take the mickey out of him all the time, joke about him, was very disparaging. He relied on him in the end, and this doctor believed he was an anaesthetist that when you put somebody to sleep, of course, the last thing that goes is your hearing. The first thing that comes back is your hearing. So he said that he he asked people what music they wanted to play when they were asleep. And he said, I'll talk you through the operation. And he never made negative comments about what they were doing. And he said at the end, he used to say to them, um, you can you you might have some discomfort afterwards there is pain relief available but you you may not need it mm -hmm. there may be a little bit of bleeding afterwards but there shouldn't be a lot and when you wake up if you've heard everything that we've said during this surgery i want you to raise your left hand and everyone woke up with the left hand in the air wow <laughs> Now, the weird thing was when my daughter had her surgery, major surgery, I told her this and she was very fortunate because she had the surgeon that she chose to have. She said to him what I told her. She says, I don't want anything negative saying during the surgery. And he was actually, he actually, he said, I, no, I, I'm quite happy to do that. I'm fine. And I think it just shows you that the power of words, because your body, the, he, his belief was that your body will do what you've been programmed to do, what it's been told. It will feel like it's being told to do. And I just I think, thought that was really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> both from, from both of you, fantastic advice. And I think we do have to remember that the power of the mind and the power of words, mm. most powerful things that we own. So please my piece of advice to everybody is hold on to your faith it's all very well we all have faith but living your faith is not an easy thing but try if you can to live your faith to hold on to your faith mm -hmm. remember that prayer is very powerful 
of the mind and the power of your thoughts are very powerful. So always try to make sure that you are positive, as you girls have just said, that you thinking in a positive way rather than a negative way. Mm. As Greg would say, uh, our world needs gentleness. And I think it's important that not only do we give gentleness and show gentleness to others, I think it's really important that we show it to ourselves as well, that we're gentle with ourselves as well. Mm. All right, I think we are good. Anything else that we need to know, Chris, from your end? No. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, I love you both. I love you. I love you. I love you. I hope our audiences love that cracking up. We shall be back, hopefully, in another few weeks, um, another maybe another month. Uh, yep. I just want to say to both of you, you've done remarkably, and you know it's been it's been great. And we'll come back on and have a little you know chat about it in a few minutes. But thank you all for watching. Thank you, everybody. Tomorrow morning is story time. Uh, so every Saturday morning we have a, a story time. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to say thank you to Grey Eagle who has been just listening. And as you all, I'd like to say thanks to Chris. I'd like to say thank you to all of you who have joined us today and especially to my two amazing, fabulous, strong friends. Thank you for your friendship as always. I really appreciate you both. And I know you appreciate me, so no need to say it. Uh, and I would just like to say, uh, because when we come off here, you know, that's the last shot we get. So <laughs> thank you, everybody. And until we see you again, please, please, all of you out there, have a very blessed and a very wonderful day, rest of the day, and a very blessed weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>